From Sally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One ball, Corner Pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Get some, everybody. Welcome into this edition of Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. We are live here on YouTube. Visit the cptallybar.com website. That's the Corner Pocket website, everybody. Check out their daily specials. See what's going on socially. Hang out. Make some friends. Throw some darts. Shoot some pool. Taking some great games. Taking a great meal. Do whatever you want. The world is yours at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal sports source. Hit the subscribe button in the lower right corner of your screen. You get notifications whenever we do these live shows, podcasts that are recorded, Michael Langston's recording chat, uh, recruiting chats, rather, uh, seminal headlines, Jeff Cameron show, everything we do on YouTube. Get it right to your phone, right to your mobile device, just by hitting subscribe. Also, thumbs up. Corey Clark, you turn everybody's thumbs up around these parts. How Whoa. are you? <laughs> what a thing to say to someone. Uh, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Speaking of CP, after the game last night, after the big, uh, the big dub for the FSU baseball team, I hadn't eaten. Uh, yeah, just eating those W's. Um, I hadn't eaten because weirdly they didn't feed us in the press box, which was a first time. I don't know what happened there, but I wasn't going to ask. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that guy. So I had to, I had to get something to eat at 10 30 and I stopped by CP. That's how good the food is. I got it to go. I wasn't in there hanging out and drinking and, uh, cavorting. I just got it to go, went home and ate it. That's how good their uh, smokehouse chicken sandwich, but I got it as a wrap. That stuff is the truth. Hey, we are live. You're going to be listening to this Thursday for your podcast, so this won't be breaking news at that point, but we can go ahead and, um, you know, if I had the breaking news music, I'd go ahead and play, but we don't have breaking news dun, music. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you that. Go. There yeah. we go. There it is, everybody. Uh, it's like, you know, again, 7 p.m. as we record this for your podcast, but we are live. Uh, had been wondering, like, what's up with this Amarius Mims guy? Obviously, the five-star offensive lineman who's at the University of Georgia committed in 2021 and uh, will be in the portal here. Uh, he was supposed to be on campus, and we're like, I hadn't heard anything, Corey. I, I, I texted Michael Langston before we went live. He's, like, working on it, and uh, there it is, everybody. So he is uh, on campus. He has arrived. We can confirm. Big news, Corey. Big, big news. It is for a big, big player. Let's hope, Hey, let's hope it, he doesn't even leave. Don't let him leave. <laughs> do something to restrain him physically if you have to, but do not let him leave until he signs his name. You know, you, you hear all this money, all this talk about the NIL, and, of course, that's that's changed the game. What if you went Godfather style with these kids and like threatened them and their families if they didn't commit? <laughs> that's an option. Look, everybody's got, you know, that's, I'm just saying that's an option, option to con consider because it's a, it's an avenue that not everybody else is driving in. They're all about the money, but you, you, you take a different tact and I bet you strong arm some kids into, into coming your way just to protect, you know, their aunt. I was thinking more like maybe, I don't know, it was like season five entourage, you know, when Vinny Chase is thinking about leaving Ari and then he goes to all the other, you know, agencies and they do the whole like Mercedes Benz, mm, IBM, right. Vincent Chase. So like it's Florida State's chance first up to do the whole, you know, Jonathan Ogden, Walter mm. Jones, Amarius Mims become a brand at Florida State. So. I assume he's probably got some sort of idea of what the NIL presentation is now. Hopefully uh, he can figure out that he still loves Alex Atkins and wants to play for him. Uh, again, a lot of the stuff that you folks are seeing and hearing is the same stuff that we're hearing and seeing and reading. You know, I think, you know, we, we kind of forget a little bit about, you know, there's a little bit, maybe some trepidation earlier this year where we thought Florida State might lose Alex Atkins to Georgia when, uh, you know, Matt Luke sort of abruptly retired as offensive line coach for Georgia. Seemed like, you know, maybe if Kirby's going to cast the net, maybe Alex Atkins would fall into it. Uh, but no, I think he hired what Stacy Searle. So maybe there's some sort of maybe doesn't like being coached by him as much as he did Matt Luke and as much as he would like to be coached by Alex Atkins. We can certainly hope that might be the case. But uh, stay connected to warchant.com uh, as updates come in. We'll keep an eye on it here live on the show to to pop it up on the screen, and let you folks know. Uh, so we're here. We got you covered. Don't worry. We're not the recruiting guys, but we're, we're doing recruiting for you now because who, mm. because who loves you? Who loves you? Gator Kirk wonders, what would your mafia name be, Corey? Like, you know, like Corey Bats? No, maybe Corey Bats. Like, uh, Corey, Corey the Muscle? Corey the Muscle? Yeah, you know? I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't think I could pull off a cool nickname like that. I could be in middle school. Everybody called me Parrot. So I that could be a name. Like, uh, is that it? I mean, that's not oh, a, probably it. Feels, it feels like you, you talk a lot. You maybe you maybe turn on you turn on your guys. I don't know if I like Parrot. 
Well, no, I definitely, that's why I got it, because I talked all the time. I wouldn't be quiet. Uh, not because I would pair it with other people. And the kid that gave me the nickname, it's kind of BS. He gave us, he ended up giving us all nicknames because he was the cool kid as a seventh grader. I mean, it was just ridiculous. I have an IQ 30 points higher than him. I should have been the one giving out nicknames. Like, there was this kid that was a 5'2", 105-pound skater kid that he nicknamed Shark. But I got the nickname Parrot, and I could take that kid and stuff him into a locker in a trash can. So anyway, um, that was a disappointment that that was the name that I, I got stuck with. So I, I, I would probably go with Corey Parrot or Corey. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I, don't, I don't have one. Baldy? No, come on, man. You're better than that. Uh, also, oh, let's man, try bald. to pull up. Curly? No. Curly, man. Uh, there you go, by the way, everybody. In case you don't believe us, there's a, a, a pho photograph. That looks like it's out from the AC Hotel. So they, so he's staying nicely. He's He's living it up. That's a nice little spot. Uh, in the Cascades area of Did you want him to put him up at like uh, the Prince Marat? Well, no, the, the Marat's not around any longer, unfortunately, Corey. <laughs> that is too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's good. That's very nice. Like, he's he's at home already. He's got his wife beater on. Like he's just like, all right, man. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, hey, man, I, if I, I guess if I looked like that, that's all I would wear. Yeah. yeah. You probably just get in the habit of I'm showing these off. I'm much stronger than you. I'm one of the strongest people you've ever met in your life. I'm not wearing anything to cover this. Yeah. So that'll be me in three months, Aslan. How about this? If this kid picks Florida State, yeah, I'll it. wear them. I'll wear one of those on the next live show. <laughs> Put the timestamp down, six thirty-nine mark. That's my promise to you guys. I will wear a white sleeveless tank top. I guess all tank tops are sleeveless uh, and jeans for the next live show. Can't do that with my hair, but I'll, I'll definitely uh, wear the costume, the uniform. Okay. All right. Uh, how about this? Octavio asks, uh, say we land Mims. What's his war, Corey Clark? What's the Mary's Mims's war? Yeah. Above the, yeah. I mean, I think that gives change, you change your win loss total prediction. I, yeah, probably. I mean, by a win, I don't know that there's a, I don't know that there's a player in the country outside of like uh, the best quarterback in the country that would change it by multiple wins. From it would they could turn like a seven win team and do a ten win team. There's probably a quarterback that could do that. That's about it. But uh, yeah, I think I think a guy that that has that much potential, um, you know, yeah, if he can live up to his potential. The problem is, how good is he going to be early? Like I know he'll be one of the best guys they have, but he's still just a sophomore. Like he's a second year player, mm -hmm. so it's not going to be like he's a ready made plug and play Jermaine Johnson type. Like he's still got some growing to do as well. So maybe I'll take that back this year. It does not change my win total. The next year it probably would, if he can live up to his potential and be like, you know, you'd hope of uh, maybe a net, the, the next first round pick at offensive lineman for Florida state. Cause it, is, it has been a minute since they had one of those, man. I almost feel like I need to, maybe we need to bring Michael Langston into this show. I feel like we're going to get a lot of questions about uh, Mims, uh, our guy, Dan Squatch, who had a very nice uh, reply the other day to our podcast. Uh, I didn't pull it up on our show, but we, we see you, Dan Squatch. Appreciate you. He and Dave from Bardstown, Kentucky, have hung out and uh, befriended each other in the great outdoors. Oh, uh, that's right. Here's, here's the reality of Mims. He could be on and off the roster in 10 days. Uh, I don't know. How, what does that mean? He could be on and off. Why would he leave if he's committed? He can't, man. You can, only, you can only do this once. You can only do this one-time transfer thing. But legitimately, he would be the highest ceiling offensive tackle we've had in the – in a half, oh yeah, half a decade, sure. Uh, more, you know, yeah, I mean, at least tackle, Kyle, yeah. Like Cam Irving was a first round pick, but he was drafted as a, I mean, I know he played tackle a lot at Florida State, but he was drafted as a center. And they announced, I'm almost positive when he got drafted, when the Browns drafted him in the first round, they announced him as a center. Yeah. Uh, we wondered what they were going to go for. And he, he, they drafted him as a center. I would say, Man, I don't know. Landon Dickerson, uh, although Dickerson doesn't didn't come as a tackle either, they they try to play him, have him play tackle, and he ended up playing center and going to Alabama and doing really well there. Yeah, I mean, man. It's been a long time since they had uh, when was a five star tackle that could actually Ever. live up to the billing. It has been a long. It's like Alex Barron. Yeah, it's been that long. It has been a it's been a barren wasteland mm. uh, since that guy when it comes to tackle. So yeah, man, this is a this is a really big deal for for Florida State. Um, but it's not it hadn't happened yet. So. We can we can uh, project and say how big it would be, but until he does, it all it is is speculation. Yeah, it's tough. Again, you know, this is where all the questions are coming in. Noel fan four hundred seven. Can you put into context how big the commitment would be? Would he be a day one starter? Would it stop uh, guys on our 
platforms from worrying about the line. Jeff's middle name is not the sky is falling, by the way, Noel fan 407. It's Jeff. I've been around this program for 20 plus years, and I know when I see a good team, Cameron. Uh, so look at you. What are you, his agent? Good I'm just green. saying, we get, we get, you know, we get too much negative. We're being negative, and it's like, man, they, they haven't had a winning season in four years. No, I think, but it's it's you know? funny. It's ironic coming from you because Jeff's whole, whole, whole issue with this team is always the offensive line. Yeah. And you're the one that's like, eh, it's just the offensive line. So right. it's just, but that's what he means when he talks about Jeff the Sky's falling camera. He's talking just about the offensive line, I think. Because uh, Jeff is more, I think Jeff's a pretty positive person about this head coach um, overall. But yeah, to answer the question, how big would it be? Yes, I do think he'd be a day one starter. I, I just because I've watched the tackles they have. Um, now, again, it's, you know, I, I, the way Kirby talked about him, and Kirby came out, I think, earlier this spring. And talked about, oh yeah, he's you know talked about his uh, his potential and how much they want him on the team and how big a play how big a player he was for the future of the program. So this was not a guy that Kirby lost lightly. Like if Kirby would have just been like same thing with Jermaine Johnson. If Kirby would have just been like, ah, good luck, you'd have been like, okay, maybe Kirby saw something in the year he was on campus where he's like, I don't know if that kid's ever going to play for us or he's not going to be what we thought he was going to be. Kirby genuinely wanted him back, which is a good sign because they have a lot of good players there. Um, so that tells me that the kid can play. That tells me he's probably going to be, as he walks in, he'll be the best tackle on your team, and uh, he would probably get a lot of playing time against Duquesne. Yeah. Well said. Not much else to add to that one. I like it, Corey. I like it. Hey, let's go to our guy down there in Naples. It's uh, Mark Adam check. Holler at your boy one time. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> What up, Mark? Welcome back, man. It says, wake up. I am Mr. Optimism. Mark, that is not Aslan, but I'm tiring. He's tired, everybody, of the constant okay. posts on the Tribal Council about expecting eight or more wins. I mean, what else can Norvell do to turn this thing around? Score more points? Yes, but do we have the personnel now to do it? Well, I mean, Mark, well, how much time is, does he have to get the per – I mean, you know. Look, He's picking all the personnel he wants. Like, we got to see something. I was going to say, to and Mark, we always appreciate it, buddy. We missed you this weekend, man. Yeah. I was too bad you couldn't make it, for real. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we'll see you the next time um, we do something. Um, shine a light on his name. I'm literally going to shine a light on his name. Oh, all right. There you go. There it is. Right there. Top of the top of the pillar. Um, but, look, man, he's got a roster now that eight wins isn't asking a lot. Now, we don't know what, you know, there's turnover luck, there's injury luck, there's all kinds of bad luck that seems to happen and follow around, follow this, follow this program around. But he's, the good news is you can't be a victim of your own expectations. You can't be a victim of your own success. And what he's done is he's, he's turned this roster into a decent college football roster. It's a top 25-ish, top 30-ish college football roster, right? All, all the teams outside the top five or 10 have awards. This team certainly has it. But as a lot of, you know, veteran players in average to above average, above, some above average college football players, and they don't have a ton of weak links on this team. Now, he has churned out this roster and turned over this roster where it's his roster now. All these guys are his, half of it's transfers. So there's really not an excuse to be like, only expecting six wins or five wins now. Like, like you know, and I, I trust me, I, I know I, I always talk about it depends on how it looks and you know, some losses are different than other losses. But at the end of the day, unless there's catastrophic injury luck, you know, I don't think expecting eight wins is unreal, unreasonable. It doesn't mean you're going to fire the guy if he gets seven wins, but it's not unreasonable to expect eight wins, especially if you're counting the bowl game, right? Eight yeah. and five, that is not asking for a lot with this roster. I don't I'm think. I mean, I'm saying more like in the 12 weeks. And I know eight's like a weird number or whatever i just eight gets you to probably a, a mid-tier bowl game um and then eight wins just over the course of 12 weeks just like do the math like you know you're gonna you're gonna win four you'll lose one and you're gonna win four and then you'll lose one like that's yeah. a good it's a good kind of momentum it's a good rhythm it's a good tempo to your season helps shore up your recruiting makes everybody else less grumpy um you know i mean eight's not it's never been some sort of like hallmark of i think the math would be you, well, you three win. one three one yeah yeah, but even then that only gets that gets you to nine and three. If you do that, if he wins three out of four games, you're you're dancing. Um, three out of I can't do the math. It's well, hard. That's a hard one. Just saying, like we're not going to go 
four weeks. We're not going to go a whole month without winning a football game. We're not going to go. Let's hope three weeks without losing a football. But I, I do wonder, like when when it comes to Norvell again, he talks about score more points. That is a huge deal, man. That if if this offense doesn't get significantly better, and only average around twenty eight to thirty points again, even though you have Duquesne and Louisiana on the schedule, and you still only average around thirty, and you average around twenty five in conference play, we you got a problem. It's year three with a quarterback that you have chosen. Like, there, this is your guy. Like, you've made it apparent this is your guy. And if you still are having the same issues and are struggling on third down and struggling scoring after year three when everybody is your recruit, okay, yeah, we got an issue. But that's that's seven months from now, and hopefully we don't even worry about it because seven months from now we'll be booking our tickets to Charlotte. And I ain't talking about the Belk Bowl, baby. I ain't talking about Ooh. the Belk Bowl. Oh, here we Well, go. that's only if Mims comes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, some guys uh, still talking and mentioning about Johnny Buckets says that uh, if he were to commit or come here, he definitely would affect uh, the win-loss total. I like this one. Uh, I did like it. Golly, there's just so much traffic right now. Everything just keeps spilling off of my screen. Our guy Kevin Johnson said something funny. Um, Where would it go? Basically, he was like, uh, do you think he would break? There it is. Found it. Do you think Mims can also crack Jared versus top five tackles I've ever faced list? <laughs> Let's hope. If he can't, we got a big issue, and that was not money well spent. Oh, and my Jared... gosh! What are we doing? Oh, man, that's loud in my ear, buddy. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, but what are we doing? Wow, look at Shane dropping <laughs> bombs. <laughs> what? What? Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. What are we doing, Corey? That's Shane. That's Shane. See, you put it. You put in the time with the people like I do, Aslan, and they appreciate it. You stayed he's away gonna, from corner pocket. You didn't. You didn't put in the time like I did. He's Shane, gonna, I appreciate that. I'm keeping all that. He's gonna get in trouble. Everyone's gonna be like, "Why are you giving them money? You should give it to hey, Mary Smims." By the way, d you do not have to worry about that when it comes to Shane. He he's got money to go around, and money is going around. He he was not here in Tallahassee. Just uh, you know, I, I was about to, I was <laughs> about to say a line from uh, Eastbound and Down, and I couldn't do it. He wasn't in town, just hanging out with people. Uh, he was he was doing things, meeting people, and um. So yeah, Shane is a very very big Florida State fan, a very big giver to the program, not just our program. Shane, you're the best. Thank you. I thought he was on a flight. I thought he wasn't on a. He's, I thought his flight out was tonight. Yeah, they went to the baseball game on uh, on Tuesday night. Got to sit with the animals. Shane and Michelle did. So they lived, They had the real experience of a Florida State baseball game. But Shane, you're the best. You didn't have to do that. You were awesome. Thank you very much. My goodness. What do you do? This guy. Shane, love you, man. Thank you. He's also on this slab of granite that has been chiseled into a mm -hmm. column. Maybe some people would call it a pillar, rather. Uh, Kirk Knoll, right there. Kirk Knoll. Shout out to our guy, man. And it was good to see you. Saw him, I saw him Saturday at Hotel Indigo for the pregame show and the meet and greet. So we'll do one of these again. Duquesne game. Maybe the LSU game as well. So uh, be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. And they were 2-0. and He got to see a softball win, a crazy softball win on Sunday, and then saw the baseball team shut out Florida. So they are – maybe the luck has turned with Shane and Michelle because they were at the Jacksonville State game. So they got to – they got to – I think they – hopefully they purged that. Golly, I just can't I can't keep track today. I don't know what's going on with me here, Core. I'm being terrible. Somebody's asking about uh, if Bless Harris could play guard. Uh, so we'll pull this one up. It's kind of off the same branch. Dan Squatch, if Rob Scott goes down tomorrow, how soon do you see Daughtry Richardson, I guess, being ready? If your best offensive tackle goes down or and Richardson are out there looking wholly unprepared. Um, yeah, so I guess that would help, obviously, with the Amaris Mim situation. But, you know, did ask Alex Atkins about yeah, I, I didn't want to be pointed about it, but kind of. Uh, don't you think like, Darius Washington would be a? They, I mean, if something yeah. like that happened, I think they moved Darius back to tackle. I would think, and then they got more options at guard. Uh, yeah, assuming that's that's not with Mims in the picture yet. Yeah, but you know, I was asking Alex Atkins about guys like Caden Lyles, like if he could play guard, and he said like absolutely. I think he was saying like his what his top six, seven, eight guys need to be able to play more than one position. There's. There, when you're that when you're in his like top eight, you can't just be one dude. Uh, so they would have options. I think mainly, as you said, Darius Washington would probably be able to flex out. 
back to his maybe natural position or whatever. Um, but bless Harris, I think is pretty versatile too. Uh, but yeah, I just wonder why we never saw, just never saw Caden allows play guard at all. But then I looked back at his PFF. He did. He hasn't played guard since 19, which I think was his freshman. Oh, year. right. Right. So, um, or maybe his second year. Cause I think his freshman year, he actually played defensive line. They were so, yes. they yep. were in such a pinch. So a uh, shout out to him, but. Um, uh, yeah, it's crazy, man. You know, we talk about spring and how valuable it is. Like Kanaya Richardson, or not Kanaya Richardson, I'm sorry, Kanaya Charlton and Dodger Richardson got serious reps, like quality, valuable reps. I mean, they were out there with with Tate Rodemaker and Johnny Wilson and, and Micah Pittman. And um, you know, they got valuable, very, very important reps. So we'll see how that kind of uh, plays out for here. Um Matthew Ogles checks in, but he doesn't have a question. He just wants to check in for the first time. He's from Live Oak. Famous people, Matt and Todd Fryer, famous places in his hometown of Live Oak, the Busy Bee. Mm -hmm. So, shout out Matthew. If you got a question, man, go ahead. Post. I wouldn't it. call the Busy Bee notorious. I think it's glorious. Yeah. Notorious seems to have a negative connotation. I, I would. Uh, I love the Busy Bee, man. That was my. That was the first of any of those massive, super duper complex gas stations I'd ever seen, and it was. Uh, it was life changing. Um, Briley says Mims is absolutely big would up the win total gives you three for one by improving the tackle position, freeing up Washington to play guard and makes bless first man up at either guard or tackle. If an injury occurs. Yeah. Wrong. I mean, it makes your offensive line better. I don't know. You know, I don't know if you're talking about a 10% gain is a better 30%, but even still, you know, I, I I have a hard time thinking it would be multiple wins from one offensive tackle. I just, that that seems, unless he's Walter Jones immediately, which why would you expect that? Because he's a sophomore. I know he was a five-star and I know he's a, a great player. Those guys have bad games and bad moments too, even really good players. Um, he would certainly raise the floor of what you expect from the offensive line for sure. Um, and yeah, man, it would be, it, it, they just... That would be a that would be a signing that would that would uh, resonate around the country. I mean, that's a big deal. A kid that was a five star, one of the best offensive linemen in the country last year, um, leaving Georgia and coming to your school would be a huge deal. Big Rick, Big Rick Cotton, didn't see him at the game, but I wasn't at the game. Uh, so, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Says uh, I've seen y'all have forgotten Julian Armella is on the way. We have not. We asked. Uh, he was asked. Mike Norvell about that. He was asked about Julian Armella. Just hard to, hard to, hard to count on true freshmen. Hard to count yes. on 18 year olds, especially ones that don't go through entire spring. Um, but yeah, if you want to start talking about 2024, if this thing looks good this year, and then 2024, you're talking about him and Mims and et cetera, et cetera, Rob Scott. Or even a year. Like, look, man, if you get somebody like Mims or just Mims and you don't have to play Armella as a true freshman, which you don't want to do, you never want to. I mean, it just college football teams don't, good ones. Don't play offensive tackles as true freshmen that often. It just doesn't happen, and there's a reason. LSU, get... like, LSU right now currently first team offense, first team left tackles a true freshman. But he's the guy that was in there for the spring. Correct. Like you know, I'm talking about, it, and I, I didn't, I didn't make that clear. I meant guys that come in in August that just go yes. through August practice. That is really hard to start as a true freshman. I would be stunned if that happens. But imagine if he got a whole year in the system to just get bigger, stronger, and better. And then maybe by 2023, those are your two tackles. I mean, that would be enormous. That all of a sudden you might have NFL guys on your offensive line, like good ones. Um, after the 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 awful forest we've been through, the darkness we've had to endure the last six, seven years when it comes to offensive line, to finally have NFL caliber guys, if Armella can prove to be that, would be enormous for this program. Let's go to our guy Lamar Calhoun. What up, Lamar? Is that before or after of Lamar? Or wow. maybe? I don't know. Lamar, is that before or after uh, in your avatar? Just wondering. Doesn't seem so, but if it is, that's incredible. Anyhow, his question, if Mims comes, what's the starting offensive look like, Corey? Mims left. We'll put him at right tackle. We'll put Bob Scott at left. Why? Uh, because he's been here longer. I'll flip those. I'll say, I'll say Mims at left, Scott at right tackle. Right. Lyles is the center. Ooh. Gibbons is a guard. Uh, Darius Washington's the other guard. Okay. And yeah. all of a sudden, you call out those names. All right, Beef. man. Beef. You Love might. Me. Aslan, again, I'm starting to get pie in the sky, man. I'm starting. The sky isn't falling. There's pie everywhere. And I'm starting to think about if this kid. I don't. You don't. I don't want to get my hopes up. But if this kid comes to Florida State, um, 
all of a sudden you might actually have a good offensive line. Dare I say a good offensive line, not average, not competent, a good one. I can't even, I don't even know how, I don't even know how I'd watch a football game like that. Changes the whole complexion of things, the whole perspective. You'd be watching in Pasadena, buddy. That's where you'd be watching it in a different, mm. a different time zone, three different time zones. Shout out to our guys, Ed Lemix, everybody. The Luna Coffee, the dude. Guys, this is a very special occasion. The Godfather himself has been kind enough to grace us with his presence. The Godfather. This is his damn house. He lives here. He sleeps 20 feet away. Y'all know Ed. Y'all know the Luna Coffee. It's the Beach and Blend. This is my uh, my cold brew go-to. Hear that? Whole mm. beans. You want whole beans? They'll send you whole beans. You want K-Cups? They got K-Cups. K-Cups. They'll grind it for you finally so you can put it in your drip coffee maker, be the coolest guy at your office or gal. Uh, they'll do a course for you so you can have it in a pour over. Maybe you want to do French press. Go to DeLunaCoffee.com. Explore their world of coffee. Promo code still active, everybody. It's uh, WarChant15. Gets you a 15% discount on their coffee. Look at this. They even got a little refresh on the website. Look at all these good people. Look, look at, at all that. These nice. Yeah, look at that. It's a good people. This is, the, this is the community that they support in Pensacola, man. That's, that's our guy, Brett. Shout out, Brett. Uh, that's our guy, Ed, right there. He's a real, he's a real person, I assure you, right there. So uh, check out the Luna Coffee. They help partner with us to uh, keep these live shows rocking and rolling, uh, along with our guys at Corner Pocket. So and don't forget the uh, the bundles. The bundles are still there. They're still a thing. You get this awesome tumbler. You get a bag of coffee, maybe even a bag of hot chocolate if you want to go that route. And you'll get a tin of some sweet delights. Put in your, you know, leave it in your. Uh, Glove compartment, have a little snack on the go, go. Uh, leave nice. it on your desk. So when people come, to, when you have to tell people to come into your office to give them bad news, at least they can enjoy something from Deluna Coffee. Uh, Ed says, "Thank you, by the way, Ed, and your fifty American dollars." You were the best, buddy. It was great seeing you too, as well. That was awesome. Uh, says, "Great seeing the War Chant crew last weekend. Brett and I had a great time. Thanks for all you did for us. We had a great meeting with the Rising Spear Group. We are going to do what we're uh, we are going to work with them. More to come." Ooh. All right, so I think of Mary Smims, we might be seeing him walking around campus with his Deluna tumbler, maybe, huh? huh? He's going to carry. A, he's going to carry that whole display with him. Yeah. He's just going to put it on his shoulders. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I, he might like coffee. There's a good chance that kid likes coffee. Yeah, good work, Ed. Make it happen. Um, Quantrell knows. Is, he's asked us, I think, twice now, so I'll pop it up on the screen. Corey, what is worse, an ACC Network production or any movie that Nicolas Cage is in? So the thing is, any movie from Nicolas Cage the last 20 years rivals it, uh, but uh, uh, at least the last 10 years when he went really crazy. But he had some good ones back in the 80s and early 90s. He, he, he did do some good stuff, and then he just went off the reservation. And no, I, I don't know if there's anything worse than uh, overall just the ACC network, the totality of it. Like, I hope they get better. They're trying, I think. Um, <laughs> but that... That spring game was very, and then I, and then Aslan's complaint about the uh, the Florida graphics was warranted, and it's just you know I just wish they would get it together. That's all. I just wish they would get it together. Yeah, you and I both. How about Eric Angel? Uh, we usually see him in town for these events. He wasn't here this past weekend, but it's all good. We'll see him, I think, in New Orleans. A little bit of that. Aslan and Corey Mims better sign with FSU and not Miami. Jeff Cameron will be jumping off the wall. If we don't land Mims, wouldn't he be jumping off the wall if, if we did? Is that a good thing if you jump bouncing off the wall? He'd be bouncing off the walls if we did get him. Right. Maybe jumping off of a, a cliff. Bridge. Yeah, a bridge or something. Yeah. So bridges, not a ton of bridges in Tallahassee. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, and yes, that would be, yeah, for all this, we just spent 30 minutes hyping this kid up. And if he goes to Miami, we're going to be like, well, you know, it's actually not that big of a deal. I mean, he's getting there late and it's going to be tough. Uh, so. Uh, we'll we'll figure it out if he does go to Miami, but hopefully that's not. Well, it won't be it won't be like a Travis Hunter situation. You're not counting on him. You're not counting on this guy yet. There's nothing to give you. I mean, I know he's interested, but you're not saying, "All right, he's here. Get locked and loaded. Let's think what he's going to look like in two or three years." It is still very much up in the air. It's just a speculation of it. Travis Hunter was like, you know, he's committed to for two years, so that 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 is different. But uh, uh, yeah, no, that would be it. Would be a big get, but it, I wouldn't say it'd be a big loss because you didn't have him. You've never had him. You know what I'm saying? You just, you'd rather him not go to Miami if he's going to go somewhere else. Literally go anywhere else but Miami or Florida. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to, to Georgia. Mike, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, shout out to our own Michael Langston also reporting that apparently this is, is going to, from what he's hearing, it's going to be a multi-day visit. 
Uh, so he just arrived this evening in Tallahassee. I think there was some hubbub out there that he was going to visit Miami on Thursday. So I don't know. I mean, if it'd be a multi-day visit in Tallahassee, I guess technically he could say it was multi-day if he gets in town this evening and hangs out tomorrow afternoon, then goes down to Miami. But um, Miami's in the picture. I would assume they probably would get a visit. Uh, and somebody was asking if this is an official or unofficial visit. I don't know how this all works when it comes to recruiting and the, and the transfer market, whether or not they can um, do all this you know, sort of stuff uh, that they would do. But if he's staying at that hotel and, and Mike Norvell's there shaking his hand, uh, maybe there is some sort of official visit that's in there. Yeah, it could be. I, I assume you can do that with transfer portal kids, I would think. Yeah, so um, Let me see if I can find another question here that's not about uh, Mary Smith's. It's really it's what a lot of people want to know. It's what they want to do. Uh, Gator Kirk, meanwhile, lamenting the uh, current state of affairs that we live in. With NIL in the picture, I guess honey fried chicken doesn't have the same pull it used to. It Correct. doesn't probably. Yeah. Did you see Nick Saban's uh, comments that I retweeted today? No, I'll, should I pull them up? Is it is it poignant? No, it was just about nil and about. Um, he said that he hated that there's he 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 thought it was going to create a caste system on his team, and he didn't like that. So he wants all the players to pull the nil money together, and they all get paid equally. Mm. Which basically, I called Nick Saban a socialist. I'm like, apparently, Nick Saban is a socialist, Man. and all I'm sure all the coaches on the staff get paid equally, right? Oh no, that's not right because you make twelve million dollars a year. So it's co- so Bryce Young has to make the same money as the backup guard or the kicker, but you get to make money than everybody else on your uh, on your staff by by huge percentages. So I just thought that was funny. It's like I get it. I think there needs to be some regulation at some point, but this guy complaining about it, um, a caste system with what he's done to this sport and what that conference has done to this sport. Give me a break. But isn't that what it's going to have to be? I mean, I know right now it's a wild, wild west, but isn't that probably the only way this thing can be sustainable, though? I mean, you know, it can't last like this forever. And it's going to be one of those things where schools just the, all that money that AM got for that recruiting class is just going to be like, this is what our salary cap is kind of, you know, and we'll give it equally out to everybody that comes to this school rather than, you know, we're going to hedge it and adjust it. You know what it made me think about is like, say I'm a, I'm a Falcons fan. I'm not going to say that. I am a Falcons fan. Um, in a rise up by the way, or actually get down to that number one pick next year. Um, it, the, every NFL team has a salary cap, right? Of a hundred, whatever it is, $200 million. What if I was just a fan that a big, a big season ticket holder, they don't have boosters in the NFL, but if I went to Arthur blank and I'm like, Hey man, I know you can only pay this. You only have enough money to pay this receiver two years, $21 million. Tell him I'll sprinkle in another $10 million if he signs with us. That's kind of what NIL can be now. You know what I mean? Like if they, I was thinking about that. If they come up with a salary cap, there's always going to be people that push it over the edge. And it's just, it's odd that it never happened in in, in the NFL where like um, a, 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 a prime free agent that can only make through the salary cap structure $48 $48 million. Well, what if you pull season ticket holders so he's going to go somewhere else or he's going to sign somewhere else? What if you pull some season ticket holders and offer him another $20 million to come? But it's all under the table. I wonder if that that's probably never happened, you think? I mean, it seems like it could, though. That's all I'm saying. I, mean, I don't the, want to live in this world that your your brain creates. I just mean, say yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, I guess, you know. But then I think about I think about like European league soccer, like premier league soccer, Bundesliga, La Liga, um, and like all these super wealthy owners, but they don't have salary. They caps, have do salary they in those cap. leagues? Yeah. The, the NFL don't. and the NBA do, but I feel like you could, um, skirt that by getting some really rich donors to pay that money that you're not allowed to pay them because you'd go over the cap. I'm just throwing that out there, guys. If any of you guys ever start owning an NFL team and want some, uh, I don't know, some ideas, I'm just spitballing with you. I can make you a winner. Uh, there's a couple of people debating the laurels of Nick Cage's IMDb career. Oh, Those okay. Nice. Model it out. Uh, by the way, Lamar does clarify that it is a before and after. My goodness, man. That's incredible. Good for you, man. That's awesome. How do you feel, Lamar? Like, how do you feel? And I want to know, you don't have to go into the details of what you were on the left. Uh, by the way, folks, if you're listening to us on podcast, it's a, he, he has two pictures. One looks more heavy set. It's just of his face. It and looks like Baby on Johnson, like Baby on Johnson to like uh, Jari and Jones, body type. Sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I mean, really. So I wonder how much weight was it, Lamar? 
because I, you don't, I don't, you don't need to tell us what you got to or what you're at now. I'm just curious of how much uh, weight you lost because that's really impressive, man. It's supposed to be cool, like the tire shoes. They keep like tire shoes is probably like a, an easy thing now. Uh, that's incredible. Shout out to that dude. Yeah, good work, Lamar. Good work, buddy. Um, Kyle in Colorado pointing out that the the pie is falling from the sky because iron is sharpening iron in Tallahassee. It's true. This is true. King Mac, how are we looking on the edge between Jermaine and Kier? They accounted for 20 of our sacks last season. Who's going to pick the slack up in 2022? Well, Jared Burse, uh, you got a guy that a lot of everybody in the country wanted, and he showed why I thought in the spring he's he's built different. Uh, there aren't many guys that move like him at that size. Uh, but again, has never played Division One football. So we'll see. I'm sure there's going to be a learning curve and there's going to be some growing pains. I hope you guys don't expect Jermaine Johnson um, right away from Jared Verse. Jermaine Johnson had played four years of college football before he got here. This kid has played, what, one and a half seasons at Albany. There's a big difference between Albany and Georgia. Um, so Jared Verse, and then I guess on the other side, you're looking at McClendon and Briggs, but you're not going to have, you're not going to pick up the slack to the point where your defensive ends account for 20 sacks. Right? I wouldn't expect that. Your defensive line on the whole could be good. Um, maybe real good if they develop some depth or get somebody else. But I don't know that you can go into a season thinking that uh, two guys are going to count for uh, 20 sacks. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, Quayshawn was hoping he'd maybe step up. Uh, been kind of up and down. He did have a TFL in the Garden and Gold game. Um, but yeah, those are those are the names. So it would be nice to get somebody maybe in the portal as well. Um, that would not hurt, right? That would not hurt at all. Uh, Dan Squatch comes back with, would landing a Marius Mims be a bigger spring development than Winston Wright's injury? I, I, yeah, I think so. Uh, number one, you can still go fill that void. If, if you don't, you know, they're, they're being very coy. They won't tell us what's up with Winston Wright and if he'll play. Uh, that's just how Norvell does things. Um, but they know. It's not like they're they're going to be surprised if he's not ready to go in September. They know the prognosis, even if they're not sharing it with us. So if they know he can't go, you know, there's an avenue to go get another guy. Like, it, we're, what are we, April 13th? The season doesn't start for three and a half months. So there's still some room out there. But, yes, I think, like, Winston Wright was a good college receiver, right? Is a good college receiver. Had proven that he's a third down. He, he can convert third downs. But he's not, I don't know that he's an NFL prospect. I don't know that he's a special player. And I mean special, special. Mims has a chance from everything you hear and read about him to be a special offensive lineman. And they just, at this place, they they just, we haven't had any of those. So yeah, I think that would be a, a, a much bigger development than Winston Wright's injury. Because, you know, I don't know the difference between Winston Wright and Ja'Kai Douglas. I, you, know, I know, you know what I mean? It's on a talent level or a skill level. I mean, I know what they produced, but maybe you throw Ja'Kai Douglas in that offense with better offensive line play, maybe better quarterback play on third down. And maybe he's putting up similar numbers. I don't know. Or would this past year. I don't know. But I know they don't have anything like Mims. Yeah. Shout out to our guy, Zach Sosa. Uh, been a minute, buddy. Says happy Thursday. Hashtag Mims to tally. Drop the bags. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. You don't even oh. have to put it in bags anymore, do you? Nah, nah. I mean, you could pose with them like a big check, like you just won a golf tournament. I mean, that's, it, yeah. that's what Rising Spears should do. Like, hey, anybody, are you, if you're not unha if you're unhappy with your school, look what look what look how happy this kid is, and he ha he's posing with a big check. Yeah, you know they have those photo shoots where like they wear the all white jerseys that we're never gonna ever see, and like the white helmet and everything. Just have him, like sitting on a throne with like money, like a Wells Fargo sign behind him or whatever. You know? <laughs> right. Just living, living yeah. in Tallahassee. Uh, by the way, Lamar, that's what that's seventy five pounds he's, he dropped. Seventy. Seventy. 70? Yeah. Good work, Alex Lamar. 70. Good for you, though, man. Atta boy. Atta boy. Gator Kirk, will this year's defense have more sacks than last year's? I don't. I would be surprised with that, right? Maybe more QB hurries. Maybe okay. that's what you're looking for. Get it, get it. I think they'll have more interceptions. Did they finish? The, I don't know. If, I don't even know if that's true. I think they finished the year like intercepting at least one pass in like seven or eight straight games. Something, a, a pretty, pretty nice stat. Um, and they had three in the last game, I think. Then they because they took Emory Jones out or they would have had more. Um, so no, I know you didn't ask about interceptions. I was just talking to myself. Um, I would say no, they will not have more sacks than last year. But they could have the same number. They got to get better at blitzing. And I think they will. I think their linebackers are on the whole better. But they've got to figure out a way. A lot of times when they blitz, that guy does not get home, doesn't even get close to getting home. 
And uh, it'd be nice if those linebackers could uh, could have more free runs at the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, according to PFF, 36 sacks last year, eight picks. They only had eight oh, picks? No, 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 that's wrong. That's for some reason. Sorry, defaulted to 2019. I don't know why I would do that. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, 47 sacks and 14 picks. I'll, I'll take 14. Yeah, that'd that's be good. nice. They had 47 sacks? That seems like a lot. That's what PFF says. That's what PFF says. All right. That seems like a lot. Good job. Good job, Fuller. Well, they got Jermaine. They got Robert Cooper with three. My guy had three. Big Coop dog. They had Kier with 10, Jermaine with 14. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they combined for 24 sacks. Yeah, you're not going to get to 47 again. No. But, hey, you're going to have a lot better coverage. So maybe that helps compensate. Hopefully, we do get some guys like Amari running off the edge. Doing a little uh, better disruption of the pocket, that kind of stuff. Um, how about our guy Jeremy? What up, Jeremy? Get a little bit of theme music. <laughs> Ten bones, we appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, it's good seeing you too, buddy. Yeah, so it's great seeing you too and the rest of the War Chant crew over the weekend. I really enjoyed the events a ton, and it really made up for a lackluster spring game. Good. Good. It's you know, I'm glad. I don't think that's what they wanted to do was to make everything else around it uh, in our stuff compensate right. for it. but maybe maybe they're listening jeremy maybe they won't do it that way again um uh, well i'm glad war chant could do its part and make the make the weekend more enjoyable than the uh the the people that put on the game did i still i mean i've been doing some like uh low-key recon on lsu and you know i saw tweets two three weeks ago when they started spring football about like i don't even think they have 50 scholarship players but somehow they're going to get to 84 by the summer, which just makes absolutely no sense. I mean, it just defies all logic. Uh, but I did see a quote from Brian Kelly where he said, like, they, like he was mad. He's like, man, I, I hate to have to do it, offense versus defense, but he's like, we can't do it any other way, unfortunately. Uh, but I just never thought we were in that boat at Florida State where we didn't have the numbers to, to run a full game. Um, but, you know. Well, yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of complaints you can make about it, from the Hall of Fame people being introduced while the play was going on to the, the they showing the wrong people on the Hall of Fame tribute. I'm talking about the Florida State Hall of Fame. To starting out with two-point conversions and not telling body, anybody in the stadium what was going on. And, not any, and then going straight to special team drills. I mean, don't start with that stuff. Get people – try to get people excited. I don't know. It was just – it was – I could understand, and I get paid to go, folks. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. Like, oh, I wasted time, wasted time out of my day. I, I just, I feel bad for the people like Jeremy. Um, they came from a great distance. I mean, at least they got to hang out with us. That should make up for it, folks. But uh, yeah, I just a lot of people come a long way for that thing, and you know, make it more enjoyable for them if you can. You just think about it if you can. How about our guy, Weldon Taylor? Thank you again, Jeremy. Appreciate it, man. He's been a long, long, long time subscriber. Yeah. yeah. .com. We appreciate the heck out of you, man. Uh, Weldon Taylor, part of the car selfie gang. What up, gang gang? Uh, do you think the defense will be better overall compared to last year's? Yes. I think it could be significantly better. Don't you? Like, especially yes. when you read those numbers. Like, that that surprises me. They did not feel the last half of the season, they, to me, did not look like the 66th best defense in the country. I thought they were decent and decent to me is like top 40 ish. And I think this year they can get to top 40 at least in total defense, scoring defense, a lot of things. I, I just think, yeah, they should be, uh, they should be so significantly better. They should take another j jump, right? Like they, the last year's defense was significantly better than 2020. We can't argue that. Like it made a really sizable jump. Now make another sizable jump. You make it a triple jump. Doesn't have to be a one jump. You're not Bob beaming out here. Or Carl Lewis be a, is there a famous triple jumper? I know nothing. Nothing was uh, cut. Kimberly Williams. She was like a great a triple Powell? jumper at Florida State. Was he a triple jumper? I don't know. I thought he was a high jumper. Yeah. I don't know. Who's the guy that broke Beeman's record? Did you already say the guy's name? I'm sorry. I'm trying to pull up the odds for the Florida State LSU game because somebody asked it, but I was trying to verify what side. I of thought the line. it was four. I thought the number was four. I see what you're saying, but what is, are we favored by four? Or are they favored by four? The LSU's favored by four. I'd take Florida State. I would, too. Yeah. I would, too. And but I'm honor. bullish. I'm bullish right now in April. See what I feel like in August. Yeah. Uh, there what do you, you, think, do you think Mims moves the line at all? That's Absolutely. the real question, gang. What, how much does Mims coming to Florida State move that line? Does he cut it to minus two? Does he cut it in half? 
Let's see here. Jaden Daniels is plus 7,500 for Heisman Trophy. I don't see our guy on here. Um, Luke Altmyer is plus 10,000. Okay. So good yeah. for him. Clay Club, uh, Kate Klubnick from Clemson plus 15,000. All right. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I know Jordan's not on here. That's kind of rude. It's kind of that is uh, odd, right? Like, I mean, he is a player at a pretty prestigious program. I know they're not very good right now, but they could be decent this year. And he he is the starting quarterback. You'd think he'd get a number. I'd put him at plus well, I think plus eight thousand would be fair, I think. Well, that's the neighborhood of yeah, that's well, that's yeah. The Tennessee's quarterback's plus eight thousand, so is BC's quarterback and Kentucky's quarterback. What are the odds that a BC quarterback wins the Heisman? I'd put him Not at plus 6,000. Malik Cunningham's at plus 6,000. Uh, Brennan Armstrong of Virginia's plus 5,000. I thought he was going to the draft, Brennan Armstrong. Um, yeah, this might not be accurate. It's Vegas Insider. I used to work okay. for them. But there's a reason he used to work for them, doesn't right. any longer, because obviously their numbers are not uh, as powerful as they used to be. Yeah, that's, that'd be incredible, man. If it, Minus four, That's 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 you've seen that core? That's out there right yeah. now? Yeah, I saw it on Twitter a few days ago, yeah. All right. Uh, Corey Aslam, Kyle says, imagine you're a 20 year old junior, which coach in the program now would hurt you the most if they were disappointed in your practice effort. Mm. Not physically hurt us, but just like it would ham. hurt to disappoint them. Ham or Odell, Odell or ham. I think he's talking about the Florida state football team just in general. Oh, uh, Odell. I feel like Odell's always disappointed in everybody's performance. So I think they get used to him not giving a lot of, uh, platitudes and and you know offering a lot of harsh criticism during the during the day um but odell is a he's a good answer um i don't know man i think atkins would be one where i think he could say some stuff or just the way he'd look at you might sting a little like because i think he cuts to the core of what you're doing wrong and doesn't have a problem telling you um that would i think that might be the one yeah i, I said what i said I said okay that's fair that's fair uh, Matthew Ogles is back. Uh, I think he checked in earlier. First time guy, Live Oak. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, him? yeah. Maybe not. Or maybe ask a question and we popped up. But anyhow, he says that he met us at Hotel Indigo. It was his girlfriend, Elise, who gave a shout out for, uh, she's the one that posts my thoughts for me. She did comment on YouTube. Shout out. All right, we get it. Those two kids. I like those two kids. They got a good mm -hmm. future. Yep, yep. What do, you guys places. About, uh, what do you think about Adam Fuller, Diamond in the Rough? I like Adam. I like Adam. I mean, um, what is a person? I like him as a coach. I don't know if him coaching like in the South as a defense coordinator is like maybe like what he was absolutely geared to, to maximize his potential. Like I could see him being like a really good position coach, like in the NFL. I really could. I just think the way he communicates, I just, it's, it's almost like too, not too complex, but that was always kind of the, the concern. Like, was it, was it sticking with these guys? Was it, was it streamlined and was it easy enough to kind of absorb and digest so these guys can play fast and figure it out. I just think maybe when you're at that higher level of football and you have way more time with these kids, some of this stuff might make a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, man, if he messes around and pops off a, a top 30 defense, I think some people might come kicking around and want to take him off of our hands, you know? Maybe, but even if he doesn't, that would make us like him more. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we yeah. would think, because look, he made it, it was a substantial gain from, I mean, as bad as 2020 was, the end of that end of last season, it was a decent defense. Not great, certainly not by Florida State standards, but decent. And now it's uh, if it can take another sizable step, uh, after two years for if it, if it can go from having one of the worst defenses we of all time, literally in Power Five football, to then two years later being being top thirty, yeah, he would probably deserve a raise. Uh, that would be a, that'd be a pretty. And I know he's gotten different groceries now to cook with, but that would be a pretty substantial gains there. That because I. I'm telling you, halftime of the Louisville game last year, I was like, this guy need this is done. This is ridiculous. This isn't working. Something clicked, something got figured out, and he proved he obviously knows how to coach football. Now let's see if he can uh, continue it and get better. Continue to get better. Keep climbing, Adam. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. I'm trying to think what so in 2019, we were 67th in scoring defense and 90th in total defense. Yeah. And last year we were 68th in scoring defense, 66th in total defense. So maybe we need to look at it that way. I, I, I don't want to give him too much credit for cratering in 2020, and then digging us out of a crater that he kind of helped maybe form. 
Uh, but I, I, yeah, feel I don't like- know, though, like that that crater was caused a lot by you had two what you thought NFL caliber defensive tackles that gave you nothing. You had two defensive ends that were drafted that gave you very little. Yeah, that whole defensive line gave you jack squat. I don't know what a defensive coordinator, what what his how that was his fault necessarily, that they were either banged up or not good or out of shape or whatever it was. You know, but I mean, that said, 2020 was awful and he doesn't get a free pass for it, especially the stuff that was blown in the secondary where it's just free dudes running free all over the place. It's our guy, Derek, uh, XDQ004, I think. We're going to probably maybe do Renegade Express for you folks tomorrow on the, on the Friday program of the mm. podcast. All right. Um, <laughs> news to Corey. Yeah, yeah let's just, do it. If we're doing this for everybody on YouTube, we should do it for the, the people. Um, sorry if this was asked. Never apologize, Derek. Who was the best non-transfer this spring on offense and defense? I think on offense, I would say... Uh... I mean, without having no, I don't have no idea how Gibbons blocked. I don't remember noticing him getting beat a lot, but he might have been, he might have had a great spring. It's just hard to know what, a, how well a guard is playing um, from, from day to day. But for the skill guys, I would say Pokey probably on offense. Okay. Okay. What Who about you? you? Say first, did you say Dylan Gibbons? I said, I don't, it, it's hard to, it's hard to say. Like Dylan Gibbons might have had a great Scott. spring. I'll give oh. it to Robert Scott just because he was there every day, man. Almost every day. Um, he okay. was like the, the one steady piece. So I'll I'll give it to him. Although it's really hard to kind of judge and grade them. Obviously, of course, that I'm not I'm not keying in on what they're doing. But again, I mean, he's the guy that they've plugged at that left tackle spot, and he held it down uh, pretty much every single day. So I'll I'll tip my cap to him. Um, and then on defense. I mean, my guy Omari, and I just think that he had just a really clean spring, man. Just there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of this. Yeah. It was just, and it was he participated. Nice... The, the other like verse, but I mean, he's a transfer, so he doesn't count. But like Cooper Lovett and Jamie Robinson all had good springs. It's just they didn't play as much as Cooper. Like Cooper was out there every day, competing every day. So I, I agree with Aslan. I would probably go with Amari and Cooper on defense. I like Pokey though on offense. That's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fight you for that. I wouldn't fight All you. All right. For um, Octavia wants to go off the board. Oh, favorite movie and song. You know, I'm starting to. My favorite movie has. I think it might be Michael Clayton. Have you ever seen that with George Clooney? Like around 2008, seven, ten, somewhere in there. It's really good. And I saw it on TV the other night. I'm like, you know what? I love this movie. The ending is great. Um, it's probably not my favorite movie, but I'm going to go ahead and say that just for, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of one that's recent and I can't ET. It's a, it's a great movie. It really is. And the dude that's on the left there, uh, I think got nominated and won the Oscar, um, for best supporting actor. I can't remember his name. Why would I? And favorite song would be, uh, Bob Wilkinson. I think he was, he was uh King George or whatever King we owe the revolutionary war. And, okay. uh, whatever Mel Gibson's movie was about the Revolutionary War, the Patriot, right? The Patriot. Mm, there you go. Right, right. What's the synopsis on this movie? I'm trying to figure it out. Michael Clay in a high-priced law firm's fixer leaves a late-night poker game, gets a call to drive to Westchester, and watches his car blow up as he's taking an impromptu dawn walk through a field. What? Yeah, but it's it that that that's not a great... It's basically the dude that plays the lawyer loses his mind because he's he stopped taking his pills and he falls in love with one of his clients, even though he's prosecuting her. It, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff, okay. and, and it's hard to explain. It's really good. Watch it, everyone. It really All is. Right. Go. You got the Corey Clark seal of approval. That's a recommendation station right there. Uh, and song is obviously knock if you buck. Correct. That's not a bad one. Um, uh, what's what's the other one? We start the 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 swag surfing isn't bad. Yeah. No. No. Um, no. Uh, hallelujah. Okay. But the Justin Timberlake version. <laughs> All right. JT. JT knocks it out of the park. Oh, uh, man. That's a tough one, right? You know, Shawshank Redemption is always going to be there yeah. somewhere in that list, never going anywhere. Old school. Like if we have the comedy bent. Um, song. I mean, shoot. Songs you guys have never really heard of. I like kind of off the, off the radar kind of stuff. Or something I really the want one to you get. sang for the girl. Yeah, yeah. How about that one? How about that one? How about Mark Johnson? You think the Knowles can reach the playoffs under Norvell? How about 2025? Can they? Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, 
yes, they, I'm not saying they can't, there's nothing I've seen from Norvell. That's like, Oh, absolutely. He can't turn this thing into a, a ACC champion caliber program, but there's nothing that we've seen that says he can, you know what I mean? Like we're right there in that gray area right now where I'm it's hope and it's not real yet. I want to see if it's real. Um, so yeah, he could do it and it would be, um, you know, say Jordan Travis takes a, has a nice season this year, Aslan, and proves he can throw it on third down, grows as a quarterback a little bit. You know, it wouldn't be crazy to think that 2023, with Higg coming back for his ninth year as a, as a Florida State Seminole, as a, as a redshirt senior quarterback, you might be set up pretty well for a, for, to maybe make a run at an ACC, depending on what the offense, if the offense can grow this year, you might be able to make a run at an ACC championship in 2023. Now, if he regresses or stays the same and other bad things happen, then who knows? They might even have a new coach. But I'm hoping for the best. Yeah. I'll also curious to see what, what Dabo ends up doing, if he's just going to keep doubling down and not trying to play the, the new game. Somebody also was pointing out that instead of Clemson looked pretty, off at, uh, pretty awful on offense in their spring game, which from yep. what I've read is also correct. Yep. Like the, the Kate Klubnik kid, the true freshman, almost kind of like one by default, just because he didn't have an, like a, a turnover. He was like 10 of 17 and Uwe Ungalale was like 13 of 28 with a pick. So right. um, not, not a lot of great shakes up there. So that's good. And they've, they've got to come in Tallahassee this year. So that's Yeah, they do. Yeah, they really. do. Our guy Wes in the Villages, name who will be quarterback two once fall camp ends. Uh, either either Tate or a transfer. I will say Tate Rodemaker will be the second string quarterback. I don't think, I think he was good enough this spring that he's he's going to be as good as anybody that's out there on the market unless something crazy happens with a power five quarterback that just gets angry at a school. And um, and why would that guy come to back up Jordan Travis? And then uh, yeah, I think he did enough to prove to them that that he could be a capable, competent backup on the level of somebody else they could get in the portal. And then uh, you have more needs. I don't know that you waste the need on a guy that you're hoping never plays because you've got enough needs of people that have to play. So you probably go that route and just hope Jordan doesn't get hurt. Do what Gator Kirk says, everybody. Hit the thumbs up button. It indeed takes very little effort, but does mean a lot. So mm. please. Garrett Sweeterman. What happened to that quarterback transfer from Illinois that turned receiver? Deuce Span. Correct. The deuce is loose. Look, man, he... He looks the part, right? He's six four and can really run. He just is. He's just really raw. He he's not great running routes yet. He's not great making contested catches yet, which is a lot of what receiver is. Back shoulder, it's no shoulder. Like he doesn't have any of that stuff yet. But he's also only been doing it for I don't know a year. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the key, guys get really good in short amounts of time sometimes. So maybe he can turn into something. You can see why they'd be why they were intrigued, right, Aslan? Just yes. the size and speed is very intriguing. It's not normal. But he didn't do a whole lot to stand out this spring at all. But, it, you know, it's a new system, and he's not, you know, he hasn't played a lot of receiver in his life. Stand by with that thought. I, I wish I would have had this up a little bit quicker. Let um, me try to pull it up here. We are going to be doing our preseason top 40 here shortly. Maybe not shortly, but eventually. I mean, he caught five passes for 124 yards. So that's like a 25-yard average. And he had two touchdowns. Right. Um, would that get you on the preseason top 40? I, no. listen, I, put, I put Wyatt Rector on my preseason top 40 last year because I'm like, he might mess around and catch two touchdowns, but one of them might be really important. And then I think, you know, maybe when you look at his overall production, you're like, well, that wasn't one of the 40 most productive players. But then you think about, well, maybe he made one of the most 40 important plays of a season to kind of get you on there. So, I don't know, man. If Deuce Span goes and catches, I mean, if he does like 20, 20 if he, you know, 20 balls for 210 and three touchdowns, I, I think just that don't think, it'll, yeah, sure, but I don't think he'll be on the field that much next year. There's just, there's a lot of bodies in front of him. I mean, I guess we'll see where, how many bodies are left after the portal ends, but, um, you know, he's not going to be more important than Pittman, Wilson, Ja'Kai Douglas, Pokey Wilson, um, Pokey, both Wills. I forget, they have the same name. I don't think they're related, though, Pokey and Johnny. Um, those four for sure, probably McLean, probably Portier. Like I think he's behind all those guys. So that's why, you know, I would, I would think McLean or Portier would have a better chance of being in the top 40 than him right now. 
Yeah. Uh, Kevin Hickson was asking about whether we go back after uh, Brandon Jennings' kid uh, who's in the portal. Kyle correctly says Michael said the staff won't recruit players that have spurned them. I think I don't know if that's like a, a full absolute, but I know he's one player that they're not going to go back after. Yeah, we talked about that on headlines. So if Travis Hunter puts some feelers out next November, you think Florida State's like, yeah, come on down? Or you think, I mean, I, I would think they would. Jeff and Ira were like uh, incensed that I even suggested that they might not be all that open arms with Travis Hunter coming to Tallahassee. Um, yeah, but I was I like, was... man, I, I don't know, man. He really did humiliate the bejesus out of you and strung you along for at least a certain amount of time, whether it was months or weeks, he strung you along just so he could have his big earth shattering announcement at your expense. Um, I know you're paid to win games and you don't, you can't um, shun the best player in the country, maybe, but are uh, one of the best players in the country, but yeah, that would be a hard, you'd have to have a long sit down with him. I would think. Yeah. Like Michael Langston has said, like, absolutely not. Uh, you know, me, not being a pragmatist, like absolutely not, like no way, like you're not going to make me look like a chump in front of millions of people. And then I'm no, like absolute hell no, like delete my number. Like I, I don't want to get this hurt. number. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I they're don't doing you, that. I don't want you to get hurt or anything, kid. But just I hope like nothing. Just you know, take a, take a, take a hike, man. Um, but yeah. as a I guy, think you're in the minority there, probably. And I wasn't saying that I. What? That oh my, God, you think yeah, yeah, I'm in the minority? Did you see how everybody reacted when he went? To, everyone's like, "Screw that!" Sure, kid. they hate him now. But if yeah. Travis Hunter was knocking down your door, wanting to come play for you for oh, two years, well, you didn't let me finish. That's what as I'm. A guy, as a guy that's my job is to win football games. Yeah, like, absolutely. I'd find a way to make kind of like make it yeah. work or whatever. You know, stadium yeah. steps, baby. Yeah. Stadium steps, Travis. Sorry, you got to run a hundred of them every day. Um, somebody was asking about. I want to just pull this up. He's asking about the odds of Miami's quarterback winning the uh, Heisman. Oh, he's definitely on there, right? Yeah, he's like plus 3,000. I, I yeah. I'll pull up the, the thing. The reason I pulled this up, I just want to make a, a fun, not a funny comment, but, you know, we were talking about everybody worried about quarterback that's going to be backing up Jordan Travis, which, you know, I've helped propagate and perpetuate. Uh, and you keep talking about like, you know, hey, listen, when, when your starting quarterback goes down, you don't get better. That's what happens. Like you get worse. And then somebody commented on one of our shows, like, well, what about Miami? You know, when Eric, when Derek King went down, they got better. Right. And I'm like, oh, like, yeah. yeah, I think that was a mistake in, uh, you know, uh, evaluation or something. Yeah. Like, I, it's crazy they had that kid on their team for that long and, and weren't playing him because he's good, man. In fact, I saw one of the, uh, one of the uh, not that anybody's going to want to hear this necessarily, one of those draft dudes I follow on Twitter said that he had seen film of Van Dyke watching something else. I'm like, man, he's really good. And this was an NFL draft guy. Like he makes all the throws. He's got the moxie you want. So he's probably, I would assume, a pro prospect in some form or fashion. But yeah, he's good, man. He's he's really good. That's probably about where he belongs right there. Which I wonder, you know, he, you know, and I don't know if he came on strong, but maybe our expectations weren't sky high for a true freshman like AJ Duffy. But like I wonder if AJ Duffy could have a good freshman year trajectory to where maybe he comes here, you know, offseason PRP player run practices has some stuff sort of clicking and then maybe by October, November, maybe like he's looking really good in practice. Maybe he somehow, I mean, that never takes a job away from Jordan, but maybe he pushes Tate for yeah. top backup honors. And that, that's a possibility. But yeah, again, if, if I had to bet on the backup for Jordan Travis for 2022 right now, I would, I would imagine it's, it's, it's going to be uh, Tate Rodemaker. I'll take a couple more here as uh, we wind this uh, puppy down here. Um, Corey, you almost did a quasi story on this. You, you gave an assist rather to the the people of the AJC, the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Well, no, I did it. I just was. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, I, I did the counting, but he was the one that asked me to count how many scholarship players Florida State had at the time. And at the time, it was eighty four, but that did not include the kids that are not on campus. So, like Sap, Armella, um, whoever the there's like two other ones that I'm forgetting right Terrell now. Terrell Powers and then yeah. um, a tight end early. Early, bam, nice. Yeah. Right. I did it. I did it, gang. Um, so that didn't count those guys. So if you'd have counted those guys, that gets you to 88, and you can only have 85. But since then, Pokey, not Pokey, Corey Wren, and I think Brownlee. I, I think Brownlee might have already been in the portal by then, but maybe not. The point being, they were at 88 scholarship players, 87 or 88, um, three weeks ago. And they've got to get down to – I mean, they got to get down to 85, so you at least got to lose a couple more, and you're probably going to want four or five more in the portal. So you're probably looking at six or seven kids that leave, I would think, or get, you know, politely get asked to leave or, you know, just don't be on the football team anymore. Okay. 
All right, last one. Thanks, everybody. Hit the thumbs up. Zach Weeble. Webble? Weeble? Well, Webel. if it, Rebel, Webel, Webel, I don't know. Rebel would be, I mean, it just sounds like it could, it looks like it could rhyme with Rebel. Yeah. So Webble. Webel. Zach Webble. Rank the top three players on offense and defense. I'll go. I'll go. Offense. Okay. Jordan. Uh, Micah. Robert Scott. Defense. Omarion. Now, Jamie. Jamie Omarion. Fabian. I love you, Coop. I love you, Robert. I love you, though, dog. Yeah, man, that's hard. Yeah, I would say defense is probably mine, too, but Bethune. Uh, oh, probably, love Bethune. Man, I, he's, I, I mean, he put I something in there. I mean, he's I, close. He's close to that top three, okay. um, which is crazy that somebody like him can't even crack the top three on your defense maybe this year. Cooper Cooper either. Uh, but I like your three. And then on offense, I would say, yeah, I'd say Jordan, Pittman, and uh, maybe for now Dylan Gibbons. Maybe for now, Dylan Gibbons or um, the other one I was thinking of is Trey Sean. Just because they're proven, but man, Trey Benson looks so good. He might be, we might look like idiots a year from now when people have this and like the freezing cold takes when Trey Benson's winning the Heisman. Um, but he hasn't proven it yet, gang. That's all. So, but those are good lists. Oh, yeah. Baker Mayfield was a walk on. So, you're right. You're you know, right. It happens. People develop. By the way, Zach just says yes. LOL. Can you like phonetically? Can you? So, how about this, Zach? Is a, is it Webel? It is like Webel. Ryan. That's what I was saying. He was agreeing with me. Okay. Well, we don't yeah. know. We, I said five different ways. He didn't no, say he yes. No, he was agreeing Corey. with me. He was, he was yes, yes, LOL, Corey. All right, there you, you, know, you Rebel. Didn't see that? All right, Rebel. There you go. Got it. Webel. Got it. There you go, Zach. Webel. Love it. All right, everybody. We're uh, we're done here, but we're not done for the week. Uh, we're going to get John Papuchas and Adam Fuller. We did get uh, – did any, any takeaways from Alex Atkins' availability? I thought we were going to start the show off with that, but then Amarius Mims showed up. Literally, uh, no, not really. But go watch it on our way. I wrote about it, and it's on in the so you can read about it on the website, and it's also on YouTube. But uh, uh, yeah, it's been an hour and seven minutes, Aslan. That's enough. You don't need to hear me talk about Alex Atkins. I did like you did mention him though about talking about the reps of the young offensive linemen, and he did say that was really important. They got they got maximum reps like SDs, Richardson, Charlton. They got maximum reps that he thought was a really big deal, um, and that's something you know. Guys last year were just playing because they had to play. These were reps, second team, third team, but a lot of reps against other good defensive linemen. So he thinks that he thinks that'll help. Uh, Kevin asking about a mysterious wide receiver that no one has seen. If if I bump into any of these coaches, or even if I see a player at Publix, I will literally I I will ask. Hey, can them. I say I'm going to say that uh, um, as of now, got a little inside information. As of now, April, they are expecting him to be here. Destin Hill. Yes. Uh, hey, Hill. don't say his name. Well, it's say, a, I guess you could say his name three times. You might conjure him like well, Candyman. Podcast, so people know. No, I know. Yeah, sorry. Good point. Um, but yeah, so uh, they they are expecting him, but nothing is a done deal yet. Uh, obviously, with this kid ever, but they they are still expecting him. He is still a part of their plans, um, apparently. And and just so everybody knows, I don't think he's played football in probably close to two years. So. Let's. I, I don't think that's like the Calvary coming. I, I honestly, I'm, I don't want to be rude to that kid, but right. I, I don't. I don't get what everyone's so obsessed about, man. You know, this isn't. Well, it's just he was their biggest Jerry recruit Tootie, from that. Man. He was their biggest recruit from that class. Oh, so. but th that class wasn't. I know, you know was, I know, but you Jerry had to hang Judy. on to something. Uh, hey, they can't all be Jerry Judy, Aslan. Some of them got to be. Maybe it's just oh, Amari Cooper. We got everybody else. We got everybody else that's not Jerry Judy on this roster. Okay, <laughs> let's get a Jerry class. Judy. Go get, get Jerry. a Jerry Judy out there. Be one of those. Um, are you at the golf course? We are not at the golf course. Uh, we are at home working for you. Stay connected to chant.com. Adam Fuller and John Papuchas uh, tomorrow, Thursday morning. We'll speak to the media, wrap up everything with spring. Um, I'll ask, we'll ask him some questions. That's what we'll do. Right. Right. Yeah. Stay connected to chant.com. Jeff Cameron show one to three o'clock, and we will probably have a podcast for you on Friday. It will probably be Renegade Express and us wrapping up our thoughts on what Adam Fuller and John Papoo just have to say. Uh, thanks, to everybody, who stopped by today. Uh, thanks to Mark. Thanks to Ed. Thanks to freaking Kirk Knoll, mm -hmm. Shane, the dude, uh, Jeremy, and Eric Angel. I think that's it for everybody who, who threw doll hairs uh, our way. We appreciate it. 
Hit the thumbs up on the way out. Corey, say goodbye for us. Peace out, everyone. We love you.